it's Rye Swag, and I'm here with a cool video, I think, where I'm going to show you um, my Charlie Chaplin Criterion releases. Um, these are all of them that have come out so far. Uh, but for a, a quick little callback, or whatever you call it, um, for your information, I guess, um, if you don't know what Criterion is, um, it's basically special edition um, movies. When, a, when Criterion releases a movie, they generally give it a remaster of some sort to make it look better than it used to. And it has a lot of special features, and they generally only release state-of-the-art films that are either really good, really important, or both. So, um, I'm not a massive Criterion, um, you know, buyer, but I definitely have about 20 of them, and about half of them are Charlie Chaplin films, because I've honestly have fallen in love with them as time has went on, and, um, this video will contain that. Now, um, a little quick thing of Charlie Chaplin. Um, he's basically a silent film star whose career spanned from pretty much the mid-1910s all the way to the late 60s. And um, he's a, a perfectionist. I would call him a... I think he's a perfectionist. I think it's been, you know, easily proven or something. He's probably said it himself because every film he releases, even if the film... If the, yeah, even if the film's plot isn't the best, will be a fun, entertaining movie nonetheless. Um, and while a lot of these are silent films, um, and, you know, they're still great entertaining films, um, if you need an introduction to silent films because you're scared of watching them because you'll be bored, just know that a very good silent film is an amazing film, and a bad silent film is just trash. It's really bad, but when you, once again, when it's good, it's really good. Now, Criterion are kind of expensive, so I would recommend waiting until July or November to buy these. Unless you just have the money to spend, then you can get them any time. But during those two months, they do have a 50% off sale. So you could basically get all these for 20 piece. And if you want all eight, it's going to pretty much be $160 plus tax. Um, I've been waiting a long time to film this video, uh, but I was also wanting the circus to come out. So I could literally just say I have all the Tramp films, um, all five of them in the collection so let's go and you're gonna get a quick ranking you're gonna get my thoughts on each film as i show you the blu-rays these are all blu-rays by the way they do they are on dvd and right now they'll be 15 bucks a piece but honestly i would recommend getting them all on blu-ray get the best get the best quality okay so first off we got the kid which is the first really big feature film that charlie chapman produced it's a little short and the only my only gripe with this release is that it's the short version, the 1972 re-release. Most of these films have been re-released in modern in, in the modern-ish landscape, just so that the films are a bit more up to date. They have new scores and stuff. You're not gonna get um, a George Lucas job, but you're gonna get is newer scores for some of these films that are pretty much all by Charlie Chaplin himself. So. It's like the director, you know, does the stuff, so I wouldn't be skeptical of getting these. Now, um, I wish it did have the original version because it's a little bit longer, and I don't know if... There's, like, a couple extra deleted scenes in here, but at the same time, I really don't know if um, the film is actually just played faster than the 68-minute version. By that, I mean it might have um, maybe... I don't know, like, the frames might be different. I have no idea. But, uh, yeah. Each of these films is going to come with a lot of special features. I'm not going to read them all, but um, I would recommend just pausing them. A good amount of them do have um, audio commentaries. I think I've heard that the newer Criterion releases are not going to get them, which is a big bummer, but um, most of them do, and I would recommend listening to them. Okay, so, yeah, this is the 53-minute version uh, if you're skeptical of, of spending $20 on a 53-minute film, I don't blame you because I was. But I really generally do recommend the film. It's really good and it ranks among my favorite Charlie Chaplin movies from here. Okay, so I'm going to fin I'm gonna fix this over here. This is the disc. Each of these films either comes with a little booklet or a foldable kind of booklet. I'm not going to spend time showing you those, but what I will show you, as you see right here, um, is 
that each of these films um, comes with. I'm gonna actually put the discs over here, so I'm not gonna show you them again, but whatever. Just some, this video can be done. They come with a little um, reversible covers. They don't really work as well as a regular reversible cover, though, because you really can't put this on the front. But it is something really nice to look for. And I don't mean you, you literally could, but it's not meant for that because you need the, I don't know. There's no, like, you know, side thing that has the title of the name. It's just something really nice to look at. And, uh, yeah, so this is The Kid. 20 bucks. I have to give this movie a 9 out of 10, basically, because it's really good. But it is kind of short. And there's even though it's short, they spend a couple minutes. Like, there's a seven-minute scene that's ultimately kind of pointless so it's really like a 45 minute film with a little bit of an epilogue it's still really good then there is the gold rush which many consider to be the funniest charlie chaplin film and it's not my favorite but i have to admit it probably is the funniest the best charlie chaplin films though in my opinion are the ones that really mix comedy with drama which the kid does and i'm not going to spoil anything but you'll, if you don't cry at the kid, man, you might, I don't know, you might be empty inside or something. So, um, each film, though, definitely does have some drama, even the more silly ones like this one. This is arguably one of the better ones, though, despite the fact that it's not one of my favorites. This Criterion release comes with two versions, the 1925 original, which won't, doesn't look so good, and the 1942 re-edit which has it's a bit shorter they removed some scenes they repurposed some other scenes this is the most george lucas-esque you're gonna get but um besides some cut scenes and added um you know uh commentary or voiceovers which if you're a fan of silent films you might not be happy with um it's not that different and uh, i'm i can't remember which version i've saw i think i've saw the one with the voices uh, it's still good. Maybe, I have to probably watch the original, and I might like that better. Here's a quick look at the special features over here. Uh, this one um, does have an audio commentary, just like the kid does. And let's open this baby up. The Gold Rush. There's the disc. I'm going to remove the disc in a second. These are Blu-ray discs, so I'm, I'm not, like, you know, throwing them all over the place, but I'm not, you know... A lot. I'm not worried to put the disc on something. Here we have the book. This is a more regular book. I believe this is an older release. Criterion used to do more of these and they've kind of done the foldable stuff, which I'm not the biggest fan of, to be honest. Mainly because it's snowing to fold them back together. I'm, I'm, I've never been good with that stuff. This one has a bit more of a generic inside, but honestly, it's fine. It's an old biggie. Um, I give this film an 8.5 out of 10. It's really good. Despite, you know, the fact that it's not one of the most serious ones. It's really funny. Now, here's the one I actually just recently bought and recently saw. For those of you who want to know, I've pretty much seen them all in order of release date. Except for this one, because I didn't want to wait three months to watch all these films. So, this is the newest one from Criterion. Um... If you want to really get this one, make sure to get it right now. Or I might have to wait a little bit because they'll probably be sold out by the end of the month. Um, this one is really good too. However, just like the Gold Rush, it's a bit, it's more funny. The ending is a little bittersweet, but it's a nice ending. It's not a happy ending or really a sad ending. That's kind of a theme of Charlie Chaplin films, but I'm not going to spoil anymore. Um, here's the back. Does it? Oh, it does have an audio commentary. Okay, cool. Maybe they're just not recording new commentary. I know a lot of these were recorded uh, years ago. I'm pretty sure Criterion remastered this a few years ago. And I don't have the Criterion channel, but you probably were able to see it before it was out on video. But that's cool. I'm not a big fan of streaming, really. I, I get Netflix and Hulu to watch, like, TV shows. But when it comes to movies, I really like to just buy them. You know, so here is the inside of uh, the circus. We're going to get this disc out. And we're going to remove the booklet, which I'll show you guys for a second. This is a newer one, so you're going to have more of a 
foldable thing right there. It's really nice looking. If you're if you still don't want to spend twenty bucks on these films, just know that these films are really good and um, they come with a lot of extras and special features. I do think for twenty bucks it's worth it. I even think for the normal price that you can get on Amazon, about twenty five, twenty seven bucks is still worth it for these films. However. I do like to save money so I can buy other films. I'm a film collector, that's what I do. Um, but they definitely have enough things. I consider them, it's like 15 bucks for the movie and five bucks for everything else. More of a generic opening, but I do love this drawing. This artwork is great. Um, this film is actually probably the least popular uh, Tramp film because Charlie Chaplin literally held it for 40 years because he was not a fan of it. It was, came out during a rough time in Charlie Chaplin's life and he um, just owned it for years. And I'm not even sure if he liked it when he redid the score, but I'm happy it's been circulated again. It's a really good film, and I'm happy that Criterion released this because I was kind of thinking they wouldn't because it's a lot, it's an obscure film, despite being the seventh highest grossing silent film of all time. I don't know if that includes the artist or what, but it's still a big accomplishment. And the fact that it's probably the least obscure one besides making besides the fact that this film probably made more money than um, modern times um which is very popular it's just weird that this film is so obscure despite being a big box office success like it is at least it's not lost though um 8.5 out of 10 by the way okay up next we have city lights city lights is my favorite i believe there's two of them that are like among my favorite and it's between this and another one. I'll get to that when I get to that. But City Lights is an amazing film. This is the first film that, in my opinion, since the kid really does good with comedy and drama. It's a, an amazing dramedy. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. I love this film, guys. It's so good. If you have to get one film, get City Lights. Even though I would say get them all and watch them in order. Because you definitely do get a really good... Um, flow when you see these movies in release or you watch him grow as a movie maker as an actor and all that stuff so this is, watch this one not have a commentary i'd be so pissed it does all right by um jeffrey vance who definitely has done i think commentary for at least two of the other um f three ones i showed you okay i think this is actually the first one that was ever released by criterion uh okay never mind no it's 2013 so it's not. This is actually a second printing. When it was released first, it came in this weird era where for a little bit, Criterion released Blu-ray DVD combo packs, and people didn't like those. I don't know why, so they stopped, <laughs> even though I would love to get DVDs. Uh, may there might have been more money, and that might have been the problem, but I don't really know. Here's the disc. Not the greatest disc, but it has good artwork. I do prefer when they have more of a Charlie Chaplin thing going, but none of these discs even really contain Charlie Chaplin except for the kid. Uh, there's a little piece of a flower, which is really important to the film. And um, here's the booklet. Put that over there. Um, this is important character of the film. This is the flower. I would say that the ending of this film is probably one of the greatest scenes in cinema history. And I'm not exaggerating. It's it's powerful, man. It's it's really it's a really strong ending. It makes the film perfect. In fact, if it wasn't for the ending, I'd say that the next film that I'm gonna mention is the best one. And let's get to Modern Times. So for these of those of you that are unaware of Charlie Chaplin, um basically um uh, and history as well, silent films ended in 1927 well 1927 1928 that's really when talkies came and if you know what talkies are they're sound films but back in the day they called them talkies so a lot of the late 20s and early 30s films are still referred to as talkies even i mean they're not really talkies anymore because like imagine if you called avengers endgame a talkie film that would be weird i don't know that's just what they refer to them and it's it's cool now this is the first arturian um release uh 2010 from uh, of a charlie chaplin film not of not criterion in general um it does have commentary by um a biographer david robinson and a lot of those other special features this film probably has the best story it's not as funny as city lights and that might be the thing the reason why i like city lights better but this is actually the conclusion of the tramp if you're aware of who the tramp is 
Um, he's the main character. He's Charlie Chaplin. For the first five films, Charlie Chaplin plays the character of the tramp. It's an episodic thing. They're not really story-driven. But if you watch this film last out of the five tramp films, it definitely does have a very satisfying and moving, touching conclusion to the tramp character. And he would never bring the tramp back, which is a weird thing because the tramp was really popular. And you'll notice that as his career went on, he did other roles and most of the movies didn't do as good as the tramp movies. And while he could have really just brought in the tramp back to get extra money, he didn't. And I really respect that out of him. This film is another 10 out of 10 film. This is my other favorite Charlie Chaplin film. The only other film released in the 1930s of Charlie Chaplin besides City Lights. This came out about eight years after Talkie started, and it's the last traditional silent film that Charlie Chaplin will ever make. But there definitely is instances of dialogue in this movie. So it's not a true silent film, but for the but most of the film, it really is. Okay, so there's the disc work. There is the little sleeve uh, book, I mean. Um, this is a bigger one than the usual ones for some reason, which is good. All right, one second. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, look at that. If you want to see the books, I'll make a separate video, but I don't want this video to be super long. So here we go. It's not the greatest inside. It's actually probably my least favorite out of all of these so far. Um, but yeah, an amazing movie. The story is the best story, but the comedy is not as great. It's still, there's still both 10 out of 10 films, though, in my opinion, this in City Lights, so... Go watch this. If you have to get two, get City Lights in this. But once again, I'd recommend you get them all. Now, this one is really popular. It's The Great Dictator. It is a very interesting cover. It's a satire on Hitler, basically, and Nazis. Made before World War II. I mean, no, wait. It was one year into World War II or something. It was like 1940. But it was basically made before, um, like, I think people even knew about concentration camps and stuff. Before America got involved in the war. And all that stuff. This is the second Criterion release of the Charlie Chaplin ones from 1940. It's kind of hard to see because, I don't know. Uh, it, it does have commentary, though. So, so far, all of these do have commentary, which is really nice. I have to listen to them. I've never listened to them personally, so I don't know how they are. Um, I don't love this film. This is his first true talkie, and I think it shows. There's really good scenes, and once again, the ending is amazing. There's no Charlie Chaplin film with a bad ending, besides maybe The Kid, which is the only really downfall of it, but it's still a nice ending anyway. Actually, I wouldn't call The Kid a bad ending. It's just every other movie has a really good ending that's like power impactful and all that stuff. But for me, The Kid kind of does wrap around like right before the final 10 minutes. But it does have a good moment that I, call, I kind of replace with the ending for my own personal end in the film. This one's a 7 out of 10. Um, a lot of people love it. It's a really good satire, but it's much slower than his other movies, which are really fast and, you know, entertaining. This is definitely not in not... An, <laughs> wait. <laughs> this is definitely an entertaining film on its own, but it's not the greatest film. Even though he retired the tramp in the previous movie, kind of does play the tramp in this one, but it's not the same character. So let's open this right up. There's the disc of Charlie Chaplin as Hitler, basically. He plays two characters in this movie. He plays um, a Jewish barber, and he plays um, a dictator who is basically Adolf Hitler. So let's get this disc out of here. Um, we got a little booklet right here. And it's not the greatest inside, but it's definitely nice. It's uh, it's really catches the eye. It's a lot of swastikas. I just noticed that. Wait, is it? No, it's not swastikas. I'm stupid. I forget if they had um, if tra if the if they made fun of um swastikas with X's in this movie. Uh, I really have to check it out. But if so, that's a really nice cover then. Um, it does have a really good ending, but it's not my favorite Charlie Chaplin film. It's one of my least favorite technically, but they're all good. Um, this is basically it. And here's the booklet. And it contains the character, the, the love interest of this film is the same love interest of modern times. She's the best one. So her scenes, she really does steal the movie at times. She's a very good actress. And that's that.
I don't know how to pronounce the name of this movie. This is probably the least pop, the least known Charlie Chaplin film that he's ever made, outside of maybe A King of New York and A Countess from Hong Kong. Those two I've actually not seen yet. Also, he made another film called, um, I don't know, Something Paris. I have not seen it either. It doesn't star him, but he directs it. It's one of the only two films that he directs that isn't really starring, but he does have cameos in both of them. Um, I don't know if Criterion will ever release those, but we'll talk about that at the end. So, this is the most different film. Um, it's more of, um, I, don't, I don't know how to describe this movie. Uh, it's very entertaining. It's definitely a step up from The Great Dictator. Most of them, the part that it's just totally different. Um, I'm happy Criterion released this, because it was one of those films that's like, they probably didn't have to do, but they did. And um, this one does not have a commentary, which is interesting. Because I would love to hear more about it. But I mean, there's documentaries and stuff, which are almost good enough, in my opinion. This is from 2013. They released this, like, way before some of the more popular ones, which is crazy to think of. There is the disc with Charlie Chaplin in it. Charlie Chaplin in this film plays one character who has a lot of disguises, who basically pretends to be a lot of different people. It's very interesting. And I don't want to spoil the movie, because it's one of those movies that you really have to just see it to believe it. A lot of the other Charlie Chaplin films are kind of predictable, but because they do fo follow, um, you know, themes and um, just structure and stuff like that. But um, this one's definitely different. I'd recommend you just watch the film. Once again, it does have a lazy cover art, but it's it's good. I'd recommend this film. It's not a must-have if you're if you're a Charlie Chaplin film fan. Even the great ta great ta uh, even the great dictator, I would recommend more. Even you know, as a Charlie Chaplin fan, but as a movie fan, I definitely think this is a better film. He, Charlie Chaplin does a very really good role at the age of fifty-eight. Might I add, he's still doing really good. At least I think it's fifty-eight. Yeah, fifty-eight. About this is nineteen forty-seven. And now the last one. I love this film. I love this film. Oh, I'm not sure if I gave a rating to this. I'd give this a 7.5 or 8, somewhere between them. It's really good. I still recommend I would recommend all these films, to be honest. And then there's Limelight. I, this is the first Charlie Chaplin film I've ever watched, and I need to watch it again. I love this film. This film is so good, and it pains me to say that not, that it's so underrated. You know, I think more people know about this than this one. Than the 1947 one, which is na the name I can't remember. But Limelight is an amazing film. However, I will recommend, I will just advise you that this is more of a, a drama than a comedy. But it's, most of the Charlie Chaplin films follow a formula of being a comedy with drama involved. This is a dramedy. Drama with comedy involved. It's a really good film, and I really consider it the last true Charlie Chaplin film. Even though there's um, King New York, this is excellent. I'm not sure if I, I'm, I might give this a 10 out of 10 just because, but if not, it's definitely a 9.5 out of 10. Some of the comedy definitely doesn't work in this film, but it kind of works for the film. And it's basically about this comedic guy in his last act. That's all I'll say. But, um... Maybe that's the point. Maybe the comedy isn't supposed to be that funny because it's supposed to be a tragic tale. I love this film. Let's go watch this one, please. Go watch it. Now, does it have a commentary? It does not. Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> this is the film I need a commentary on. Please, Cartoon, just release this with the commentary. I'm begging you. This is the character he plays. Um... Interesting note, the film's supposed to take place in 1914, and that's the year that Charlie Chaplin started his career. It's a really good, interesting film. It's really at a guy at his end, and the parallels between his real life and his character in this movie are really crazy, dude. It's nuts. There's the disc. This is Limelight. Let's get that disc right out of there. Uh, this is the book. pictures and stuff and there's actually no artwork this is the only criterion release that i out that i own that doesn't have any inside artwork which is weird but whatever so i'm gonna put this down for a second and i'm gonna organize everything um put them all back 
Now I'm gonna comprise a list. It's not an official list. I might make another video of this later on, but um, I'm gonna call this my temporary top eight Charlie Chaplin Criterion films. Okay, so number one. Oh my god, we're gonna go with City Lights. Actually, no, let's do it from worst to best. Let's do that. This is hard, dude. This is so hard. I, mean, I hate to say it, but I think my least favorite is The Great Dictator. Then, this film. It's slow in parts, but it's still a great film, nonetheless. Um... Then we got the Gold Rush. It's more of a, of a com, you know, comedy than any film, anything. There are drama moments, but I do prefer comedy and drama mixed together as opposed to just a straight out comedy with some dramatic, with um, some dramatic moments. Um, I hate to say it, but I think the kid will have to be um, number five because it's short, and that's literally it. Um, then the circus. The circus is really good. It's very funny. I do like it more than The Gold Rush. Um, I, I think. I have to watch The Gold Rush again, really. I don't remember that much from it. Um, number three, Limelight. Fantastic film. You gotta watch this. It's so good. Two, Modern Times. And one, City Lights. And that's basically the talk about all these movies. Um, so I'm gonna give a quick little discussion about... Um, you know, you will get a little bit of just because you want to see them all together. I'll put them in later, one of the discs. Um, I don't know if the circus marks the end of Criterion releasing Charlie Chaplin films on Blu-ray, but um, I'd like to give some of my thoughts on what they should release. Honestly, I don't know if they're going to release Account is from Hong Kong, because you can get that film easily on Blu-ray today. The need is not that strong. But I would like for them to release A King of New York, or A King in New York, I don't know what the film's called. But that'd be really interesting. Um, There's a film that he directed and didn't um, star in, but he has a cameo role in it. Um, Something in Paris. Um, the film actually, I believe, is on Criterion. So Criterion has definitely remastered the film. It's just, if who knows if they're going to release it. I would love if they do, but I don't think it has the best ratings. But I can't tell if, if that's because people wanted Charlie in the film or not. So I'd like to just see that anyway. And last but not least, I would love if they released, um, I'm gonna actually put these in order of release date now, just for the thumbnail purpose. Uh, I'd love if they would release um, a, a collection of the Charlie Chaplin short films. That would be so great. Like They could literally just release 90-ish minutes every year or so onto a Blu-ray for 20 bucks, and I think people would buy it. Criterion is money, dude. I mean, uh, Charlie Chaplin and Criterion work together because, you know, Charlie Chaplin films always do good. The Circus has been out for two months, and it's still the fifth highest selling one on BarnesandNoble.com, which is great. Um, people generally love that film. Um, and it, for a reason, you know? And they love Charlie Chaplin films, um, so I'd love if they released, like, 90-so minutes of, you know, a remastered shorts. That would be really cool. I put the raw, I put, oh my gosh, this is a failure, guys. Wait, here we go. Alright, great, dictator goes here. This is like a Charlie Chaplin film act right here, if you guys see, if you see what I'm doing. But yeah, actually, I should really just um, have a wide view of these films. That would be much better, I suppose. So here it is, guys. These are all the films. Damn, you might be shuffled them in a better way so you can see them and shit. I've been doing this for 30 minutes. Oh my goodness. Well, oh well. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, oh, quick note: all these films. I should have mentioned this with you know the beginning of the video. All these films look amazing. Um, you know, the kid obviously is gonna be a little bit dated looking, but it's still great. And they all look HD pretty much. You can see them. You can see all the faces. All the faces crystal clear and all that. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, peace out and go buy Cartier releases. The sale is going on until the end of the month. Bye.